Any idea what this might be? How about now? Well, easy, of course. It's the uh, it's just a gardening tool helping you to collect fruits. It's the fruit collector. Now, why during lunchtime am I telling you about the fruit collector when everyone's craving uh, probably for some carbs or something? Well, my point is, if we can make, you know, ignore the cryptic German now, if we can make a uh, infographic on fruit consumption, if we can say that there are 2,700 three apples that you can plant in your garden to then eat, if we can say that uh, people in Germany um, consume 19.1 kilograms of apples per year, then we can probably build an infographic on everything and kind of the sky's the limit. So that leads me to why I'm actually here today. Um, I'm going to walk you a little bit through the jungle of infographics out there. I'm going to try and build a theoretical framework when it comes to our information overload society, um, sharing some stats and numbers with you on that, and at the end of the day, wrap it all up and explain to you what is not an option to get rid of infographics. So, to start with, um, just a quick word on who I am. Um, my name is Robin. I work for Statista, which is sort of a, you know, Netflix, but now imagine a Netflix not for movies and series, but for statistics and market data, so a platform aggregating stats and numbers from all over the world. I'm in charge, however, of a creative department called Content Marketing and Information Design. I always thought my job is, you know, to consult with companies on data visualizations, infographics, uh, storytelling, but to put it in the in the words of the four-year-old daughter of my colleague, apparently we paint uh, pictures and give them to other people over the computer. So that's what we do. Right, um, you might have heard of that statistic actually, but I find it quite stunning and stunning again. Um, we produce 2.5 quintillion bytes per day in our society. I can now tell you, okay, that's 25, that's a 25 plus 18 zeros, and you walk away with that number, but no one understands it, so let's actually break this down. Um, you've all heard of a megabyte, you know, when you take a photo or send a photo via email. Now imagine one megabyte is equivalent to one book. You might have also heard of gigabytes when you buy a laptop, for example. Uh, one gigabyte, 1,600 books in terms of the content. The techies of you heard, a, heard about a terabyte, so one terabyte is 1.6 million books. Now if you calculate that number times 16 million, that's how you arrive at uh, 2.5 quintillion bytes per day, which by the way is a stack of books from the middle of the earth only 16,000 kilometers short to the moon, so 96% of the distance covering from the middle of the earth to the moon. That's what we produce every day in terms of data. In my opinion, the real scary aspect is that uh, I couldn't find an up-to-date number, so that's 2015. So that's actually three years ago. If you now think about our mobile-first artificial intelligence society and what we produce now, three years later, you can probably do the calculation yourself where we're now. Um, a quick experiment. How many seconds does it take you to read this text? Maybe four, five, seven seconds. But how much time does it take you to understand this image? Um, how many sevens do you see? Color, size, and orientation, of course, do matter in terms of visual communication, in terms of getting a message across uh, quite quickly. So, there was a study um, done by Nielsen Norman Group. Um, they checked in terms of user experience and uh, traffic on website how much people actually spend in terms of reading actual website text. And they found that only 20% roughly read the text on a website. Um, this is also underpinned in sort of this example here on the right. You probably can't see it. This is kind of TV size here. But um, on the right hand side, it says, this is the picture of a black bird set in a tree. Um, the bird is looking to the left, the leaves of the tree are yellow, orange and red, and it is autumn. So I'm explaining the situation, but again, if you look at that on the left, of course you get it a bit more quicker. And with all of that as a foundation, 
I would like to walk you through some cases today of uh, infographics that are easy to read, easy to understand, easy to remember and have the potential to go viral or that went viral. Now, because I probably only have 10 more minutes, um, it's going to be a bit of a slide storm now, I hope that's okay. Um, to start with, we're going to probably look at one of the most simple examples today. So, two years ago I sat on a train from Copenhagen in Denmark to Malmö in Sweden. These two countries are actually connected by a bridge. And um, two years ago there was this refugee crisis peak in Europe. And this infographic that made it on a newspaper that was sitting, laying next to me on that train, says in Swedish 2.3 million people were controlled on the trains in two months when you took a train over that bridge. So passport controls reintroduced by the Swedish government. 69 of them, so one pixel, uh, looked actually for asylum, I think you say. So 69, one pixel versus a full cover. Um, and admittedly, this infographic is not about the storytelling power per se, but more about the story triggers in the background when you now think about all these extra police shifts, all these people who came to work late because they were controlled and only 69, there were only 69 cases out of 2.3 million. Um, yeah, quite contrasting numbers, contrasting design, but as you see, an infographic can made it on a newspaper front page. We'll stay in Scandinavia for a moment. Um, there's this Danish designer who does quite an interesting job. He actually builds infographics based on survey results and does them completely um, topic specific. So he tries to mirror the actual uh, topic within the design. If you look on the left, and I hope you see it in the back, I'm not sure. Um, this one was about refugees and immigrants. So instead of just building a bar chart, he thought, okay, why don't I design this in a headscarf style? Same with the one in the middle. This is about health. So he went to the lab and made a visualization based out of liquids. This third one is about law and order. He used police uh, do not cross tape to do so. And in my opinion, it's, it's a bit tricky not to look at it because it's kind of simple but powerful design. Um, this one is about probably a topic that uh, we're all very good at, uh, driving a car, but um, probably not many of us can actually explain how it works. So this is a GIF infographic, and what I like about it is simply it gives us four different processes or four different steps, contrasting colors that change, and um, by the interaction of those, this infographic explains how an engine works in four different steps. So quickly, uh, but intuitive, and a nice idea. Please also note, by the way, um, the heading. It's very, very typical for good performing infographics, how something works, or the five things you didn't know about, or how a certain process is working and so forth. This is usually uh, leading to some engagement and clicks. One of my all-time favorites, um, again, I hope you can read it. Probably not. Uh, the age you peak at everything according to science. Now here we have a visualization of certain age of us human beings and to give you an example uh, for the number 30 it says bone mass so for example last year I didn't have my 30th birthday I apparently had my bone mass celebration party because <laughs> that's the year where my bone mass quality and skeleton peaks. Uh, many of us can still do a Nobel Prize winning discovery because uh, that's, that usually happens at the age of 40. And quite surprising, if you ask me, 74, happiness with your body. I would have thought that happens maybe at 23 or so. Um, but apparently that's what, what science says. To build a bridge from that infographic to a real life example, I think this is something maybe an insurance company could have used very well to make a case. Or maybe a nutrition company to you know, and, uh, underpin the fact um, what we're all able to do if life is long. Speaking of which, it's a bit scary by the way when you look at such a visualization. I don't want to sound too bit, uh, pessimistic, but life is actually not that long if you look at you know, just the numbers in, in certain roles, but let's skip that for now. So from real life to uh, fiction, um, the battle of bonds. You can already see on the left hand side the sheer size of this infographic and the storytelling behind it. And I just took a little chapter because I think it's a 
literally killer statistic. Um, apparently, Daniel Craig is the only James Bond who drank more martinis than women he kissed. And um, the other one above says, you have a one in three chance to die at the end of the movie as a woman when you slept with James Bond. So, it's of course, about weighing up your options um, if you want to live a happy life or um, have a great night with James. Um, check out, by the way, as well, how they used a theme in terms of the actual visualization that comes close to the theme of the movie. So I think in English you say a hair cross, you know, that thing you look through in a weapon. And they used this sort of spider chart hair cross design as well. Gosh, I just wrote this one because I wanted to ask you any idea what this might be? Then you would have said yes, that's the periodic uh, elements, periodic system of elements. Um, you remember all those well-spent chemistry classes that brought you into the marketing and advertising positions that you're in now? But my point here is more, um, if I click on one more slide, someone had the brilliant idea to use that in order to show condiments that periodically go bad. So from two days, uh, salsa, guacamole, and tzatziki sauce to lifelong companions such as malt vinegar, honey, salt, and sugar. And my scientific point behind that, there is a um, theory in communication science called framing. Framing uh, happens sort of unconsciously and it allows us to interpret certain things, certain patterns that we are used to, that we know in a new area. And that's exactly what happened here. Our brain probably, our eyes look at it because we kind of remember, well, I've seen this before and I think that's um, quite an opportunity for you as marketers or communicators as well to use known patterns, put new content in there or change it slightly in order to engage with your audiences. Um, this is one that we've done actually in-house, so there's this guy from Ireland working for Generali, a big insurance company, who asked us to make an infographic on um, how much parents spend for their children in life, and he specifically said, don't bore me with something I've seen before. So we made an infographic called the Bank of Mom and Dad, and what's special here um, is that we've actually built every single statistic ourselves, meaning we didn't fake it, but as you can see maybe in this chart, we bought everyday tools and took photos of them. So on the top you have Play-Doh from kindergarten. We put that in front of a gray paper card, took a photo of it. Um, on the left-hand side you have three different pencil types to show the school costs in the US for parents, a different school type. And uh, my all-time favorite, our designer had the idea to go down in the shop, invested 70 pennies, um, bought a loaf of bread and cut it into pieces. So, um, and then we made a statistic out of it. Oh yeah, it's not an algorithm by the way, it's a design of <laughs> um, Then one sort of out of the box example, um, check out this ad on the right hand side. Uh, what is the world record for bacon eating? We work for a bacon company in Denmark, sorry to all vegetarians. Um, and we thought, let's give it a try and do that for advertising, make it more like an infographic design. And we A-B tested this by using this ad and then exactly the same wording with another ad uh, that simply has a, a vacant uh, stock image. 1.1% um, CTR versus 0 0.6, so nearly doubling it. Um, and my gut feeling is people just like well-designed numbers. I mean, it's not a representative study, but I can imagine that this works in different contexts, by the way. Um, any Canadians here? One, okay. If you, for, for you then, and all of your Canadian friends, by the way, we took this from an infographic we did for them on the International Bacon Day. Top right, best statistic in the world. If they had to choose between bacon and sex, 43% of Canadians would go for the bacon. Mm. I'll just uh, I'll leave that uncommented. Right, I already got an indication about time, so that's an issue now. Uh, that's homework for you. Check out on YouTube, type in Hans Rosling, crazy Swedish professor, visualizing data over 200 years, um, lifespan versus income, and basically engaging with numbers in a sort of v VR uh, style. Very interesting to look at. Um, if you have a bit of paint left and uh, money, you can of course also put an infographic on your product, like the South African airline did, um, and then explain, you know, the black box is actually orange, um, 
the loo should be called the Mile High Club Initiation Chamber. Um, the aircraft registration code is actually a secret agent code and so forth. So, you know, we're not only limited to online communication. Yeah, and that leads me now to probably a very, very quick outro uh, due to time issues on takeaways and why it's not an option to get rid of infographics. So, um, number one. Format, style, and valid data. If, for example, you know that your audiences um, are mostly mobile first, then please avoid you know, landscape or cinema formats because that doesn't really make sense. If you speak mostly to people in Asia, then I would rather use more comic design than, let's say, Scandinavian uh, minimalism. And, of course, double-check your data because it might be embarrassing if actually James Bond, uh, you know, did not drink more martinis than the women he kissed. Um, <laughs> interplay between text and images. Um, there's a nice quote, without graphics an idea might be lost in a sea of words. Without words a graphic may be lost to ambiguity. So only the two work really together. An image is relatively helpful to explain something quick. A text allows for deeper analysis, but if you put the two together, um, you have a very well working symbiosis. Um, I think nowadays, in 2018, uh, it's often about reduction of complexity. We all have this amount of data in our CRMs, but filtering them, ordering them, and um, putting them into formats so that we actually digest them in a nice way is one of our big tasks. Um, opportunities. Infographics have a high opportunity to what I call connecting the dots and making the invisible visible. What I mean by that is, you know, who would have thought that uh, there's a correlation between movies that Mr. Nicolas Cage appears in and people who drown by falling into a pool? Or if I tell you that 15,000 people in Tokyo cross the, the green light phase in Shibuya, in this massive junction, that number itself is interesting. But if you then say, well, that's the amount of people that fit into Wimbledon Center Court, that puts another perspective into it and it might become a bit more powerful. Um, skip that. And then maybe, I always add one thing in the morning before presentation, this was today, immediately thought about it actually, if you, if you look at a good infographic and it grabs you, it's well designed, you look at the whole thing, you know what's happening and you engage with it. If you do that with, uh, with a video, by the way, with a video you actually need to invest 60 seconds to see if there's something in it for you. So the sort of immediacy of an infographic is quite powerful, I believe. Um, I'm going to skip traffic links, leads and customers right now, um, simply for time reasons and it is something that you've heard before. Last but not least, I simply want to tell you, um, if you do this professionally, if you build, um, if, you, if you continuously build up infographics and engage informa and share information with your communities, you will be perceived as a, um, as a brand that is worthwhile to follow, so it does make sense and last but not least, I mentioned before, we live in an information overload world where we WhatsApp friends, watch TV, listen to a podcast, like stuff on Instagram at the same time. But cynically, good news um, for us is that you know people still look at our messages and they even look at it that way that they don't realize that a whale is nearly flipping over their, their boat. So, thank you very much. That's me. Let, let me also give a, just a, a, a unrehearsed plug. I didn't realize that who you were until I saw your logo. Yeah. If you follow me at Ackman Gilmore on Twitter, you'll see that I often use your infographics because when I want a compelling infographic, I look up the statistic because you generally have one. Thank, Thank you. you very much for sharing your insights. Appreciate it.